Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. If you want to send something into the Mailbag, if you're an individual or a company, send it to Mailbag. It's got to have Mailbag on it, EV Vlog Mailbag, PO Box 7949, Norwest, New South Wales, 2153, Australia, not Austria. Thank you very much. You'll know this name, Barry Marshall. Bazza um, has sent something in. If you don't know, I'll link in his video down below. He visited the lab. It's not every day you get something sent in by a Nobel Prize winner. Yes, he won a Nobel Prize in medicine, and he's a vintage computer nerd and a vintage tech nerd as well. Anyway, um, this is kind of a sad... Oh, um, he said I should open this on camera. Normally, I wouldn't because... It's, um, uh, he said there's something in here, but it is actually a return. A return of a faulty EV log meter. It happens. Um, I've had a lot of Bryman failures lately, actually, but this is a 121GW. And he said, um, open this on camera, and that's why, because <laughs> that is not the normal shipping box, I can assure you, for a 121GW. So, um, we have a note. Oh, look what I get. Look what I, I, I'm going to read the note first. This is so special. Um, it, it, no, this is just our, was our email. Um, it's, no, that's it. No, 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 there's no explanation, but he said he would send something special. Look what I got. Look what I got. It's a Nobel medal. Well, it's not his one. It's not his exact one. Because <laughs> there's actually three of them. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but they are little Nobel Metals, uh, metals, terrific, awesome, and look at this, I, I should actually have this package in for the 121 GW meter, check that out. Sorry, just realised the battery in my wireless mic on the camera um, had failed, so yeah, you're going to get really crappy uh, from a mic from on the camera, which is a metre and a half away. Anyway, look at this box, I should, <laughs> I should ship all my metres in, in this sort of box, check it out. Isn't that groovy? Anyway, um, yeah, he's got a failed uh, 121. Uh, it's perfect. Look at it. Uh, a failed 121 GW meter. Sad face. Um, yeah, it does actually um, happen. Failures aren't, uh, they're not, you know, it's not a large number. In fact, I get more Bryman uh, failures than I do 121 GWs, although I haven't really correlated that with, um, like, it's beeping at me. Beeping at me, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, there's something wrong. That's just on volts mode. Wow, haven't seen that one before. Anyway, um, yeah. Oh, bummer. I have to take a look at it. And it turns out that these are actually chocolate. <laughs> so, I oh don't want to eat them all. They're too good, but I've got to try one. I've got to try a Nobel. I wonder where he got them from. <laughs> didn't, didn't he get like a whole a, a swag bag of them when he won his Nobel Prize? I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, this looks like this looks like chocolate to me. Oh, there we go. That is chocolate. Mmm. I wonder. Oh, I'm going to go for it. Mmm. Sorry, nothing special about it. <laughs> it's possible. Expected a bit better from a Nobel Prize chocolate, so yeah, I wonder where he got them from. I wonder if you only get these um, if you like attend the Nobel Prize ceremony or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you can't just make these willy nilly. Anyway, thank you very much, Bazza. Let's have a look at the meter. Well, yeah, something certainly come a guts are there. Um, never seen this fault before. Overflow, as in like. 1000 volt overflow? So do it on DC? No, it's okay on DC. Okay. Mi uh, on milli? A it's okay on AC millivolts. That's actually not updating. That's that's not updating. That should be that should be changing. Hello? Hello? <laughs> wow. Um that's a strange one. Got that on a voltage reference source, uh 3 volts and that's just that's just reading nothing. But on millivolts DC, it's... Oh, no. No, I thought it was going to do something. I've got 300 milli... Feeding in 300 millivolts. If I feed in 3 volts, it overloads. But if I feed in 300 millivolts, it just it gives me 0.1 millivolts. Uh, that is weird.
All right, let's have a look here. And uh, first thing I noticed is Baz has changed the fuse to a glass one. None of that ceramic rubbish. Um, that's all he had available, obviously. Blew the uh, fuse and, well, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> Ad admittedly, these um, uh, this uh, size and rating uh, fuse is a little bit hard to get. Yeah, let's let's have a look at the the visuals because this is a rather unusual, rather unusual fault. So there's the HY3131 chipset. Just look in, look in, and that's that's a nothing burger. I'm not sure what that is. That almost looks like oh, that's a bit of celastic because they do actually use celastic. Um, over here to hold the crystal down over there, but um, yeah, I've got our Bluetooth module and uh, it's got the mod board on there. I've done a video on that, um, how to do mod boards. Uh, so uh, the input, I mean, like if, if any of the input was broken, like, you know, input, uh, the input resistors or anything, um, then, of course, you wouldn't get anything. You wouldn't read overload. It's, uh, yeah, why would you be reading overload? That's had a bit of a uh, touch-up there. Not sure what's doing there. That was not Baza, I'm sure. And yes, Barry. No one calls Barry Barry in Australia. It's Baza. That's how it works here in Australia. Well, that's interesting. That one has come a guts a sideways. Not sure what's doing there. Offhand, I don't remember what that part is, but yeah, that's um that does that looks to have been hand done at the factory for some reason, and they goofed it because that's not you know look look a nice you know nice beautiful reflow over here right beautiful beautiful and that's been sort of I don't know what's going on there, but uh, in fact I've got to get in there at an angle. It's hard to get the Tagano on an angle here because I have to drop it, I have to raise it up higher to get the focus range, but that actually looks okay. There's, there's nothing actually wrong there. It is actually connected and it's not shorted, so I don't think that's an issue. Not really seeing anything visual. The multimeter chipset is where all the magic happens because it's not going to be the processor doing it, right? The processor is going to, which is on the um, other side of the board, it's going to get the, you know, the info from the chipset that tells it it's over range and then the meter just does what it does and uh, yeah, it, it indicates an overload. So, so something strange is indeed going on here. Um, this is quite an old unit. Yeah, this is quite an old unit. Dates from uh, 2018, so it's uh, it's had a decent life, but I don't know. Yeah, no, no, there's nothing, nothing visual. So yeah, um, the mod board doesn't exist anymore, of course. Yeah, so this would have been an early batch. There's something more subtle going on in here, and that is not the time for the mailbag unfortunately. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to leave that to a second video, but I'll send Bazza a new meter. This one will have to be a work in progress, I'm afraid, but leave it in the comments down below if you've spotted something, but I doubt it's it's almost certainly electrical, I would guess, but I don't know. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, failures are pretty rare in it, but yeah, and I've never seen one like this before that causes an overload. That's just... I don't know, it's like maxing out the ADC and it's thinking that it's uh, uh, overload, warning Will Robinson, that's why it was beeping, that was the warning, you know, the uh, high voltage warning beep. Um, yeah, don't know, sorry Bazza, that sucks, I'll send you a newie. Next up, hi to all my viewers in Canada, in particular Montreal, and uh, this one comes from Ann uh, Kutis, who we've, I'm sure... This is at least the second sug, suck of the mailbag. So we do like what's in here. It's one of the uh, perennial favorite items on the EV blog mailbag. So yes, never cut towards yourself. I am a professional. I am using the correct tongue angle. I didn't quite get through that one evenly. Maybe I have to sharpen the knife. Oh. Ooh, whoa, look at this. Look at this. Wow. We got two TI calculators complete with their original 
Owners, well, and owners manual and operating guys. All the TI fanboys go wild. You know, I'm a Casio man myself. Sorry for all you TI fanboys, but ah, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, that one's is that? I've got an SR51, which rattles. Doesn't sound that good. <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, this is not the original pouch. This is an original TI pouch, though. Jeez, that's in good nick. Wow. Wow, that's in fantastic. It's got even the belt clip carried around in your belt. Hey, leave it in the comments down below if you carried it around in your belt. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. I don't think we've ever had a Made in Canada calculator before. It's a Digimatic 8. Look at this. It's a four banger, and it, like... We'll take a closer look at this, but wow, it is like, again, that doesn't sound good. Uh, 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 let's go to the bench. Check out this Bobby Dazzler. We're talking 1974, 75-ish of vintage. We'll find out when we uh, tear it apart. But uh, yeah, this is the original SR51. Uh, it actually was uh, very quickly replaced, apparently, with the 51A. So this was only out for a couple of months, uh, one report uh, goes anyway. And then they released an SR51 uh, Mark II or Dash II or, or something like that. So yeah, this is one of the originals, and it's a super slide rule calculator. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Back when, you know, people were still thinking, eh, I like my slide rule, but eh, these newfangled calculators, oh, this one's an, it's an electronic super slide rule. Fantastic. I'll have a go of that. And uh, 29,892 serial number there. And was that actually manufactured in Dallas, Texas? I, I assume so. I don't know. Leave it in the comments down below if you know, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, they've got some uh, conversions there. There you go, mils to microns, like, and you can actually put in the code. So, wow, that's actually built in. That's quite something. And it's got some uh, statistical uh, stuff as well. So this is more advanced than your regular um, scientific calculator. Lead uh, red bubble display, of course. I believe it's a uh, 10 digit plus two digit exponent. Nice, all sorts of stuff. This would have been pretty hot stuff back in the day. And if we get the battery compartment out, we will see, uh-oh, um, the contacts of, battery contacts of uh, Kamigatsa. And, well, that looks like why it's, oh, anything else in there? And all this was uh, why it was uh, rattling around. So, yeah, but uh, it's been marked negative, positive there. But uh, you can tell by the uh, there's somebody's marked it red at the factory there. So, um, yeah, we can just hook into there. No worries. Uh, and it looks like we had a card edge connector. That's not for uh, expansion or anything like that, I believe. That would just be for uh, production testing. So, yeah. Oh, there you go. We've got a diode in there, and um, yeah, that's it. So it's just got a diode in there for the external uh, plug pack, if you, you know, because these things drew a bit of power. So, you know, you might want to, uh, and batteries were expensive back then, I guess. All right, so let's power this up, three volts, and uh, see what we get, shall we? There you go, uh, 40, 46 milliamps, it's working. Oh, geez, hang on, I'm gonna have to turn the studio lights off here. That's a bit low, but it's there. Oh, it's there. Yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> it works. Of course it works. I would totally expect this to work. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten digit and uh, two digit exponent. There you go. Look at that. What a Bobby Dazzler. That screen is really weird. Like, if I'm using it, like, flat on the desk like that, I can't actually read that. I've got to tilt that up. I've got to tilt it right up in an angle like that, so I'm not sure what the deal was that can't be how it was back in the day leave it in the comments down below that that just can't be it i mean that's like beyond straight down it's actually like yeah i don't i don't understand what's going on there somebody hacked around with the optics in there or something but that doesn't seem to make sense like i can't even read that there's a giant strip across there and it's not really um to do with like the reflection of the lights overhead or anything so eh. anyway it does work anyway we can do the calculator forensics nine sine cos tan and then invert tan 
invert cos and invert sine. Oh no, that's hyperbolic. Up, uh, that, that's not inverse. It's hyperbolic. Can we do what? Can't do inverse. Um, that kind of sucks. It's got a random number generator, two-digit random number generator. <laughs> Could have done better than that. Check out the operating guide here. Little, um, you know, a ring binder. It's not the uh, owner's manual. That's uh, separate. But yeah, this is just like a quick reference uh, guide kind of thing. Uh, mathematical hierarchy. You need to know that for your calculator. Trig functions. There you go. We can do um, inverse sine. So is that the second? No, oh, in inverse. Is there an? Where's the? Where's the inverse? Oh, there's the inverse button. Okay, right. I get it now. So we can do that now. We can go 9 sine cos tan and then arc tan arc cos arc sine. Uh, we're not, we're, we're not at, oh, is that a 9? No, that's a 4. Dumbass me, I was in radians mode. <laughs> Stick it over to degrees mode there, Dave. Um, right, 9 sine. Cosine tangent. There you go. I should have <laughs> known that. <laughs> well, I did. I realized. <laughs> Give me a break. There you go. 9.0000004661. And if you go look up the data forensics for that, that will match the uh, TI chipset used in this bad boy. But yeah, I got to tell you, that screen is awful. Like, I can't use that. I can't use it unless I, like, get like a couple of like degrees, like five degree window there of, of tilt on that. That's not just the camera. That's not just reflections or anything. That's just like, what? I, I, maybe somebody's, maybe the else, somebody's had a hack at this and the screen's moved or something, maybe. Then we have the actual owner's manual here and I just flipped through a random page and I found this. This is absolutely hilarious. Check it out. Um, like, in, uh, like they've got examples like aerodynamics, you know, an aeroplane is a steady coordinated turn, true airspeed, 50 degree bank angle, what is the turn radius in feet and all that sort of stuff. And they help you uh, figure that out. But this one's hilarious over here. <laughs> Look at this. Meter correction. An electrical engineer wishes to measure the signal level of a voice channel. Oh, you do that all the time. Having an equivalent impedance of 150 ohms, the power measuring test set. Everyone's got one of those that he can then provide uh, termination resistance of either 600 ohms, 150 ohms, but the deflecting meter, none of that digital rubbish, is only calibrated for 600 ohms. What correction factor should apply to the meter readings where the channel is terminated in 150 ohms? <laughs> <laughs> Try that question in a modern <laughs> electronics exam and see how far you get. <laughs> That's great. And you guessed that the answer is 6.02 dB. Before he uses the calculator, he recalls that the voltage ratio to decibel conversion provided with the calculator is defined as 20 log. Thus, he must divide this result by 2 to obtain the answer he needs. <laughs> This is great. Cam problem. Torque problem. Distributed transmission line parameters. Wow. Characteristic impedance. Wow. This is great. Like, this is a vector addition. This is great stuff. Approximation Monte Carlo method. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Approximating integrals and stuff like that. Like solution to differential equations. Approximating derivatives. Algebraic equations. Wow. This is really trying, really register level processing. Oh, there you go. So like um, the equivalent to like an assembler for a calculator, really. Um, yeah, like you can keep it in, in the registers and the memory and you can, you know, do a bit more advanced stuff with fewer key presses, linear regression, I inverse function. Wow. Is this all like examples? I li literally haven't even looked at the front table of contents yet. There's the key uh, index. Physical science, look, statistical applications, engineering, mathematics, business and finance. Wow. Sum of products, product of sums. <laughs> Your SR51 is a powerful computational tool capable of solving a wide variety of problems. It has been designed for those who require an accurate, reliable, and versatile slide rule calculator. Because your SR51 uses the algebraic mode, none of that RPM rubbish, you can probably already perform most calculations. However, to assist you obtaining the most benefit, we have uh, prepared this owner's manual and, and guide. This is, this is great stuff. I, this is absolutely fantastic. I love this. And it's almost like a bought one too. Wow, the pages haven't really yellowed or anything. That's into one one year warranty. <laughs> 
and send it back to the TI printed in the United States of America, USA. This bad boy has metal threaded inserts. Thank you very much. Three screws there. And we pop it right off. None of that surface mount rubbish. Look at this. Oh, hang on, it's upside down. All the electrons are going to fall out. Don't want that. It's the worst thing that can happen to your calculator. And uh, we've got, uh, yeah, 75. 10th week, uh, 75. Yeah, 5th week, 75. There you go. Apparently, there are some of these uh, 74 uh, vintage. But as I said, this didn't last long. They released an A version. So I'm not sure what difference uh, the A version uh, makes. But anyway, there's a little diode just in series with the input there. So, um, you know, you can't get the polarity wrong. But uh, anyway, it's just a four-chip solution. And 74LS, uh, is that 240 there? And what, the other one? And a 74LS02, that's it. So a couple of uh, TTLs and, you know, the low-power shocky. This thing uh, only draws 50 milliamps. It's, you know, sniffer for an oily rag stuff. Oh, this is piggybacked. Look, it's piggybacked. Piggyback chipped. Wow, look at that. Why have they done that? Why have they done, there's no, they're, they're soldered, all in parallel. Wow. Uh, how does that work? It's like, you usually, like, you know, back in, back in the day, when I was a boy, you would make a RAM stack, um, as it was called, or a ROM stack, um, and you could actually stack the memory chips, because all the address and data lines, they were all in parallel, and all you had to break out you know, power, address, data, they're all in parallel. So you solder the tips, chips one on top of uh, the other. Usually you put like a socket in there so that you could actually take them apart. And then you actually just bring out one of the, uh, bring out the uh, chip select uh, pin. There's no such thing happening there, is there? I'm not, I'm not seeing it. If anyone knows why they actually stack two chips physically in parallel, is it a drive thing? drive capability thing that's interesting anyway there you go um that's a fascinating look at this uh, uh ti 51 oh, slide sr51 slide rule calculator and well it's a bobby dazzler apart from the screen <laughs> screen um which i never figured out did i okay we have five screws and don't want all the keys to fall out but there you go so uh no, there's the, there's the, ah, oh, yeah, look, look, it's been cracked. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think that's moved. I think that's moved. Actually, better off taking that out, actually. There you go. Yeah, look, it's cracked there. So I reckon that's what's happened. It's cracked and then it's uh, tilted at the wrong angle and just can't uh, see it. But there you go. There's the little uh, tactile domes. Still work after all this time. And uh, gold-plated tracers. We've got two extra uh, chips on the bottom, actually. Two sneaky little uh, 74 series chips. They are actually uh, 51st week 1974. So, oh, there you go. A bit of reflection off the keys there. Overexposes the camera there. But, uh, yeah, look. And these use individual bubble displays. Unlike, like, the HP jobbies were all integrated. These ones are actually individual like that. Wow. I don't think I've seen those before with that staggered pin arrangement. Isn't that terrific? Yeah, HP did that did that somewhat differently. But uh, I guess that's how I uh, did TI make these LEDs? I'm not actually sure. I should know that. Then you've got just all the individual loosey-goosey Keys like that, that'd be a dog at production time, wouldn't it? <laughs> Jeez. And then the switches in there, they're just got like sliding contacts like that on, onto the gold-plated tracers. <laughs> nice. All right, let's try and power this up. Whoa, look at that. Oh, look. Oh, why is that counting? What? What? Uh, what am I... What was I doing? Was I accidentally doing a couple of tracers? How the heck did I get that? Anyway, there you go. Um, yeah, these are not very good lead displays. <laughs> oh, they're so weird. What? What the heck? How did I get that count? That's hilarious. I have no clue how I got that to count up. If anyone knows, leave it in the comments down below. Maybe I'll get a clue when I watch this video back during the edit, but 
I don't know. Was I, I must have been touching something, shorting out to some... I could, like, I no, I don't get it. Just for you charger plug pack aficionados, look at that. Genuine Texas Instruments, US patent pending, made in the United States of America. And uh, yeah, 6 volt uh, AC, so yeah, 175 milliamps. It was actually 5 watts. It was actually, yeah, so you put rechargeable batteries in this thing, because as you saw, it drew 50 milliamps. So what the heck is this thing? The Digimatic 8. <laughs> it's a four banger, um, as they're called in the trade. Um, and oh that's a oh that's a stiff as operation outline refer to instruction manual for complete details <laughs> it's just like how to use a four banger thank you very much um and um, in all correspondence regarding this article always mention model number 41030 <laughs> what the heck is this um Sarah, they made 101,000 of these <laughs> made in Canada expressly for Simpsons Sears and Simpsons is that like a a department this sounds like a department store or something like that uh, leave it in the comments down below hands up if you had one of these oh look at that <laughs> that's for the uh plug pack which i do have with it oh goodness like wow <laughs> just, just, just what oh you can only use it with the plug pack there's no batteries at all seriously Okay, I'm going to give it a bow. Um, I've got one of those Yankee adapters, and uh, we'll... Are you, maybe it has a rechargeable battery in it. Well, it turns out I can't, because my 120-volt, um, uh, like, transformer is missing in action. I don't know where it is. Got my isolation transformer, but... Oh, I think it's just disappearing in the lab. It's unbelievable. Stuff gets moved around all the time. Oh, sorry. Let's just take it apart. All right, let's get it. Oh, yeah, look. There's the battery. Oh, t t t hey, hey, hello. That wouldn't have worked anyway. What? No, no, that's in that's in parallel. It might have. Oh, oh look. Oh, what's that? That's got a bit Ernie Bernie there. Look at that. Um, yeah, like it plugs into there. Anyway, two ball construction. PM nine oh five plus seven point two volts, and the battery's just like Lucy Goosey's just flapping around. Oh, yeah. It's just flapping around in the breeze there. It's a GP Silver Charge 280K. Oh, it's a Radio Shack jobby. Made in Hong Kong. <laughs> Resealable safety vent. <laughs> yeah, after a vent, you want to reseal it. Wow, look at that. It's a uh, TI chipset. Um, uh, look, 1972. So it's an early, uh, t one of the early TI chipsets. None of that piggyback stuff this time. Um... Yeah, anyway, we've got a board-to-board -board interconnect there, and looks like that's nine digits, is it? And, uh, of course, there's no uh, exponent. There's no none of that uh, scientific rubbish. BOMAR. Leave it in the comments if you've ever heard of BOMAR. Uh, optostic? Optostic? Is that what that's... <laughs> BOMAR. Um, I, I don't know. Is it a BOMAR display? Is that... I've never heard of BOMAR. Anyway, look, that's an interesting uh, flat arrangement, like nine-digit jobby. And she's a bit uh, a bit rusty. Yeah, this is a bit crusty. Um, <laughs> I don't like it at all. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, nah. Anyway, that looks like it's um, three 1.2-volt uh, NICADs. So, yeah, let me run a uh, 3.6 onto here and uh, see what we get. Well, we're getting 70 milliamp uh, draw there, so it's doing, it's doing something. Carefully flip it over. Oh yeah, look at that. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. That's better than the TI one. So, look, still works. No worries. <laughs> no, the six point. Oh, I know six is a bit sticky. Oh, E, E. Oh, okay. No, so it's only eight digit. Oh, yeah, that is very limited, is it not? <laughs> but, you know, would have been useful back in the day. How much did this cost? Um, did, like, leave it in the comments. Did you ever have one back in, what, 72, was it? Wow, that's really going back. One of the early TI four banger chipsets. Anyway, thank you very much, Anne, for sending those in. The TI SR51 uh, is uh, going straight to the pool room. I uh, don't know about this one, though. <laughs> but, uh, you know, 
it's got its place. Maybe there's a whole bunch of fanboys out there who are enraged. <laughs> Next up, hi to all my viewers in Japan. Thank you very much, Keith Sear, for sending this in. To follow on from the previous one, let's have a squeeze at what we got here. This, I, it, it, the description does not fit the form factor, if you know what I mean. So, let's have a look. What's in here? I've got a note. Oh, look, check it out. <laughs> we got... Classic 1980s folding calculator wallets. Oh, wow. Oh, there's a whole bunch of, look. Oh, Casio SL760. Haven't I done a teardown? I think I've done a teardown of that, haven't I? I I'm pretty, it was one of the Casio. Oh, wow, a whole bunch of them. Senyo. Oh, this is a bonanza. A bonanza of credit card calculators. Casio um, SL760 in a different, very, oh, that one still works. That, that solar jobby still works. Of course it still works. There's a Casio. Wow. This is, and they've got the original pouches. And SL7, three Casio SL760s, a Senyo, and whatever this is, a Gent. I don't know. It's very sophisticated. But we're not done yet. What is in here? This is the, oh, hey, there you go. It's not a calculator. Learn multi-platform assembly programming. There you go. We've got a book. It looks like Keith did write it. <laughs> awesome. So we'll take a quick squiz at that. And we've got calculators. Fantastic. Ah, oh, Keith's actually sent in a book before. So this is another book that is written. And apparently, after it was featured on the mailbag, it was quite popular and sold quite well. This is a number. This is an Amazon uh, Kindle uh, KDP or, uh, you know, print on demand. And it's it's a hardcover print on demand. This looks great quality for Kindle. I've, I don't think I've ever seen a Kindle print on demand hardcover before. That's actually really quite good and uh, and uh, to answer the question that I had last time did he actually draw all of the um, stuff in the books himself and he said yes so presumably this one is well awesome and he's planning a third book next year with another five assembly languages <laughs> so we may hear from Keith again wow if you're into well, what does this one cover <laughs> multi-platform assembly program. How do you do multi-platform assembly programming? I guess we have to read the book to find out. So this is Keith's book. Anyway, um, assemblytutorial.com um, and it's also uh, learnasm.net. I don't know if they're different, but uh, anyway, visit both of those. This is volume two. We looked at volume one. I don't recall it. Actually, sorry, there's been too many mailbags. So yeah, he wrote this using uh, all open source uh, stuff and of course got it self-published on uh, the Kindle KDP system and they print on demand, basically. Um, so there you go. Oh, it's got, got a YouTube uh, channel as well for video uh, tutorials completely created entirely free and open source software so he wants to promote the fact that anyone can actually uh like do like publish their own book and yes i would recommend it um it and look he's drawn his own stuff so technical terminology of assembly and retro programming so anyway i won't, won't spoil it too much disc images and tape images Signed numbers, how they work, words, octal, all that sort of stuff. You've got your ASCIIs. It's got graphics uh, terminology, digital, how digital and analog joysticks work. Very, like, I love the diagrams. They're great. Defining bytes of data in on the arm in VASM. Um, so this is all, like, assembly language stuff, and it's multiple languages. So you've got the, uh, so it's basically generic uh, stuff. Then you've got ARM, uh, thumb. Then you've got a 65816. Uh, then you've got the classic uh, 6809. And what, the PDP-11? And then uh, re then modern stuff, you've got the Risk Five. Absolutely fantastic. Let's go to Risk Five, shall we? So there it is, the Risk Five, which uh, we talked about a lot on the Amp Hour. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the stack and Risk Five assembly language. And like, this is like really amazing. In fact, I we talked about it on the Amp Hour, and I did uh, tweet it or retweeted it or something, um, where somebody wrote an entire Risk Five core in like like 50 lines or something of uh, Verilog 
or something like that. It was absolutely like bare bones or something. It was absolutely um, crazy. So there you go. That could be good if you want to get into your Risk Five stuff. So anyway, so great work, Keith. That's absolutely uh, fantastic. Multi-platform assembly programming with the uh, Chibi Akamas is an introduction. I guess he writes that looks like it's an application or something, and he writes it in different languages. I assume that's what it is. Chiki Akuma are the characters I created for the 8-bit Amstrad CPC game I wrote in, in uh, Z80 Assembler. After I wrote the uh, game, I started creating YouTube videos covering assembly uh, content using game as subject material. Yeah, so it looks like he's like porting that like to different platforms and using that as a uh, learning thing. So yeah, that's absolutely Terrific. So, I, great work, Keith. I'll link in uh, Keith's books down below. It's terrific stuff. Love people. Like, so easy to self-publish these days. And they print on demand. So there's no wastage. So you order one book, Amazon will print it. Even hardcover like this, they'll print it and bind it. They've got the uh, magical machines that do that. And, um, yeah, Bob's your uncle. And check them out. Retro calcs. And look, three of them are working. Oh, that one's just just working but these are working absolutely fine solar powered no wackers right there are there are only four bangers although you know you can argue it's more because it's got the square roots in it but yeah these were a thing back in the 80s these are all sl760 and you could like get them branded under your own company name film card and i've done a tear down uh in one of my uh there you go original price tag hard off co dot <laughs> hard off <laughs> Great website. <laughs> Go dot Japan. You get more than calculators there, I'm sure. Anyway, these are made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. And uh, yeah, credit card film size calculators. Now, I'll link in a video. I've done a teardown of one of these, which I think is the world's slimmest one. These ones look thicker than the one I tore down, but don't quote me on that. And this Senyo one is even thicker again. So Senyo couldn't quite match Casio, but this one does uh, data memo and stuff. So, you know, it's almost like one of those, you know, 1980s uh, digital diary uh, type things, I guess. Turns out the one I tore down was the SL800. So I presume that this one, the SL760, predates that. Hmm. So yeah, I do believe these are thicker. Uh, this is 2.85 millimeters, and by looking at my video, I didn't watch the whole thing uh, to guess, see if I actually measured that, but yeah, it, it was thinner than this. So the SL800 I've torn down is a newer generation of this SL760, uh, but there you go, aren't they cute? Little, you know, you could keep them in your wallet back then, and you had a calculator ready. If you didn't, of course, have a calculator watch, which everyone did in the... It was the 1980s, man. And just to top it off, oh, imagine if you flip this out in the 1980s. Oh, it's the gent. Oh, look at the, like, the simulated, um, like, marble finish on that. And once again, that works an absolute treat. No worries at all. Like, yeah, we can clear that. <laughs> That's great. That is absolutely terrific. Even comes with square root, but look at the gent. Hands up if you had the gent LC517. Oh, that's just pure, pure wankery. I see screws. I'm going to open that because these things, you can't, they've got no screws on them. You can't open them. They're all uh, glued together, but this one, all right, let's go. Oh, look at that. That's far too easy. <laughs> there you go. Just a really slim, like, that's not even 0.8 millimeter board, like 0.5 millimeter or something like that. There'll just be a chip on board on the other side and I won't even bother taking that out, will I? No, it's not chip on board. There you go. Look at that. Oh, oh, my LCD fell out. Don't you hate it when your LCD falls out? Damn it. But yeah, hopefully you can see in there. That is not a chip on board. That's just a, a slim um, a flat pack. And then the LCD, I'm not sure if that, uh, <laughs> was that just a press? Is that just a press fit holding that on? No, no, I think I've, I think it's come a guts up. <laughs> I'll try and put that back together. But anyway, um, thank you very much, Keith, for uh, sending in the book and these uh, classic little film card calculators. I could try and take one of these ones apart and uh, compare it with the SL800. So 
that might be interesting to see because I'm sure this was before because it's, uh, well, it's got a number that's lower and it's um, uh, thicker. So I presume they hadn't perfected that really slim technology they did in the SL800. Hmm. Anyway, leave it in the comments down below if you want me to do a video dedicated to, like, demolding, delaminating this like I did with the SL800. <laughs> Next up, we've got one from Hungary. So hi to all my viewers in Hungary, in particular Budapest and Daniel Nagy. Thank you very much. I'm um, sorry this one's been here for a while. I just picked them randomly from <laughs> the bench. I should do them in, or in the order that I actually get them. I'm hopeless at this. Anyway, the note is on top so I can uh, read it. I've been a follower of your channel for several years recently and appreciate the content. Thank you very much. Enter enter education and entertaining. Finally, I would do the pleasure of sending you a homemade project. It's a simple countdown timer that I made for my family to use when playing games such as Scrabble. Oh, I, I don't think we've ever played Scrabble with a time limit before, so that's interesting. Um, right, so we've got, oh, it feels like, a, like an actual, it's not just a bare board, it feels like a complete product. Let's have a look. Oh, wow, look, that, that looks pretty professional, doesn't it? Scrabble timer. Look at that. I like that. That's jazzy. Wow. On and there's well on and I gotta push the power. Whereas the battery dead. It's been sitting on the shelf for so long the battery could be dead. Ah, no, he included a battery. <laughs> Alright, and we've got some postcards apparently. We like postcards. People do like the people do like to see postcards. So there you go, Budapest. Very nice. Never been there. But that looks lovely. There's another one. Most excellent. And oh, this is the and this is the prototype. Look at that. That's fantastic. We've got a, a the prototype of this project, and that turns out to be a nice that that's a nice build. I really like that. And it looks like he's used a case with uh, like an off-the-shelf uh, case with two uh, AA battery holders. You can get those. There's lots of infinite variations of off-the-shelf cases that use uh, battery holders. So you don't have to design your own integrated uh, battery holder at all. So yeah, um, so you choose a case and then you design your product around the off-the-shelf case that you get. And that's uh, quite common, even in volume. Um, you can, you know, they're, they're still reasonably uh, affordable. I can, th that just looks really cool. So check out Daniel's Scrabble timer. Doesn't that look neat? Um, that's contact. <laughs> Trust me, I've used a lot of uh, contact to make front panels um, back in the day. So he's like laser printed that and then just put contact on the uh, top. Um, I, yeah, my pro some of my projects published in the electronics magazines had contact paper <laughs> printed and then contact um, front covers. So yeah, anyway, um, so this just uses an off the shelf. It looks like it three times. Is that like three times speed? I don't know. Is that a thing? I don't. I don't know. Scrabble had a time limit. Anyway, um, yeah. As I said, these cases uh, you buy off the shelf. Oh, look, uh, long life Varta, made in Germany. None of that alkaline rubbish. These aren't going to leak. So, Bobby Dazzler. So let's put that on there. Yeah. As I said, you can get these off the shelf cases. Not sure who uh, makes this particular one, but oh, look. There you go. So start. Oh, it's got a little backlight there. Just in the dark, you're playing Scrabble in the dark, and um, it, it just counts down like that. Would have been nice, I guess, if it had like bigger like buttons so that you didn't have to like like fiddle with the uh, little ones. You know, small criticism there. I'm sure it beeps um, at the end of this, and we could have set the time there. So, oh, yep. Oh, it goes up in 10 second increments. Yeah, you don't want one second rubbish. That's just dicking around. Yeah, you don't want 10 minutes per turn. So, 20 seconds. There you go. And light comes on at the same time. Yep. And we'll wait for that. It's going to go beepity beep beep beep. And that's neat. I just like that it's like specifically, yeah, okay, you can just get a timer from anywhere, right? But it's not a Scrabble timer, right? And it's not like purpose designed like that. I like that he's got and like an off-the-shelf, he's found an off-the-shelf, or is that, did he use only one of the digit? Is that actually, because usually you'd get the LCD longer. Let's open it up and see if he's actually just windowed off um, any extra digits in there. Because normally you know, I think you might be hard-pressed to get um, that three-digit with the uh, time um, thing in there. So anyway, yeah, it did be. Let's open it up. Oh, it tight as a nun's nasty. And let's crack it open and... 
Isn't that and yeah, I was right. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I called it. There you go. A bigger LCD there. Anyway, version 1.0. Didn't have to uh, respin that. Oh, no. Rev C. Timer 1.0. Rev board. Rev uh, C. Look at that. Isn't that neat? So there's just a whole bunch of um, uh, wires. Like, oh, there's a lot in here for a timer. There's an awful lot in here. There you go. Oh, look at that. This is just beautiful. Look at this. Right, bottom, <laughs> big clunk and switch on the bottom. And we've got our uh, power supply down there. Not quite sure why you'd need to go to that effort on the uh, power side of things. But look at this. Double-sided load. Oh, I'm going to have to get my... I can't see this. You can probably see it on your newfangled HD screens. I can't see it on my little piddly camcorder screen. we have got HC 192s and 4543s. And just a whole bunch of um, uh, caps and resistors. And what do we got on top here? There we go. I'll let you have a look at those, assuming you can get the numbers at the right angle. And um, is this all discrete logic? What is this bad boy down here? Sem4 HC574. Yep, this is all discrete logic. That's the only thing that made sense. Okay, huge hats off for going all discrete logic on that. Very, very nice. I like it. I really like it. <laughs> Hence the uh, complexity. Of course, you could just do this with a single micro just running uh, from the uh, coin cells. But uh, where's the challenge in that? I like that. Wow. That is terrific. There you go. I assume that this is uh, open. There you go. It's, it's beautiful. <whistles> Whoop. Oops, beeping. That is great. That is all discrete logic. Um, he didn't actually say that in here, but that is terrific. And it doesn't look like Daniel's um, selling it, but uh, there's his email. If you want to uh, contact him, maybe he might uh, share the uh, schematics and open source this thing, because I'd, I'd be proud of that. Like, if I did, uh, like, discrete logic like that, nobody does that anymore. And it's a shame, because it's, it's just great. I love it, and I love the uh, just just the windowing off of the uh, front of the uh, case there. So ah yes, it's a uh, Takashi case. Yeah, they've got uh, they make a ton of different um, variety cases. So oh there you go. Oh and he's put like rather than have your traditional ones that mount onto there and have the shaft coming out, he's actually done these as little things and just individually taped down. Little buttons on there. Oh, he's gone to quite significant effort there. Anyway, hats off. I like that. That's the wins the EEV Blog Design of the Week award. Anyway, hope you enjoyed Mailbag. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time. Hello.